We're joined now by Nick Pinchuk. He is the CEO of Snap-on. It's a manufacturer of high-end tools and equipment. And Nick, when you think about your customers, you think about your factories, were you surprised to see inflation actually come in higher than what had been expected? Well, I don't know. It was 3.5. What was it? 3.4. Uh, I'm not sure I can measure that difference, really, in terms of where we are and the ground. You know, I don't think anybody is measuring that difference. And so it doesn't seem so much different. I think in terms of manufacturers, inflation isn't the big factor, mm. you know, at least for us, you know, you look at prices, some are up, some are down versus prior, prior periods, but we just came through a difficult period, a storm where spot buys were killing you. And so you saw inflation uh, fairly strong. I would say this particular interlude is not particularly troubling. You know, I think certainly a previous clip that you showed sort of show, showed people kind of wringing their hands. I don't see that at all with manufacturers. There are other things that bother manufacturers, of course. You know, in terms of the environment and bigger things about global, like Neil Ferguson was on the other day, about the global environment. And so the bad news for breakfast about things that are unquantifiable is bothering our customers and also, according to the National Association of Manufacturers, bothering small manufacturers. Well, if it's on inflation that's bothering manufacturers right now, go into a little bit more detail about what is when it comes to the global landscape. Well, if you look at this, I, I think this is the situation. You look at small, man. it's kind of tale of two cities, small manufacturers versus big manufacturers. Middle of last year and before that, small manufacturers were more optimistic than big manufacturers. Big manufacturers were more looking at the idea recession is coming. Small manufacturers weren't affected by that so much. And then sort of the third quarter last year, that, that, juxtap that juxtaposed, it, it, it changed. And small manufacturers became more worried. And they've continued to be so, whereas larger manufacturers have figured we can manage the situation. Uh, Snap-on, for example, has the ability to manage the situation. Small people have less margin for error. Mm -hmm. And so what they're seeing is they're worried about things like, like consumers, like our, our, our mechanics in the garages. They're worried about the bad news for breakfast, the stuff that can, you cannot be comforted by economic models, like two wars in the Middle East, mm -hmm. like the conflict with China over Taiwan. I think, I think Neil Ferguson talked about it similar to the you know, at the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. I lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis. I don't think it's as bad as the Cuban Missile Crisis, but it could be. You're talking about the border, where a lot of people know they get their, uh, their, uh, their workers, but it's turned into like a frenzied migration. You're talking about the, the Red Sea possibly bringing up prices. You're talking about the idea that, uh, you know, the, the, the optics of the bridge, and you're talking about the uncertainty of the elections. And so people are looking you know, forward and saying you're uncertain. You know, a, a line from Dune, fear yeah. is the mind killer. And you could say fear is the outlook killer. And you're seeing that in man small manufacturers and our customers. Further, manufacturers, I think, are kind of a little disappointed with the government. They thought coming out of the pandemic, they were going to be the heroes. They stood their ground, kept the essential work going, uh, kept the society from disintegrating, managed through the supply crisis during that period and they thought that onshoring was going to go. They don't see that mm. in government policy. You know, R&D tax credits and all those things aren't really working the way they had anticipated. So they're a little more pessimistic. Right. So are everyday people, the grassroots people. Well, there's a lot to dig into there, but I want to talk about small businesses because it's not just CPI data that we got this week. We also got data when it comes to small businesses and really their, their confidence, their optimism. It dropped to an 11-year low in the prior reading, which really matches up with what you were just saying. And I mean, when it comes to those small businesses, those small manufacturers, how does that influence what decisions they're making versus maybe some of the larger manufacturers? Well, I think they... They're, they're worried about capital expenditures. They're, they're a bit like the customers in the garages. Car mechanics, by the way, their own entrepreneurs, you know, they get paid by the job, not by the hour. So they're managers, not kind of mini business themselves. And so what happens with those people, they're gonna focus on smaller payback, shorter payback items in terms of capital expenditures and so on. They're gonna make sure that they don't get out on traffic, kind of like battening down the hatches in some ways, because they're worried about the future. Small manufacturers, the, uh, you know, if you think about it, they have a lot less uh, room for error. If you talk to the National Association of Manufacturers, you know, just like regulations. Regulations, you know, everybody complains about them, but they do tend to weigh down manufacturers. But small manufacturers are burdened almost twice the amount that big manufacturers, larger manufacturers are burdened by regulation costs per employee. And mm -hmm. the manufacturing sector is about 240,000 people, all but 4,000 are small. 
Yeah, no, it's a really good point, and it's really good perspective. Of course, as we head into the 2024 election, and some of the things that we're talking about when it comes to sentiment and what's weighing on sentiment and optimism, you think about onshoring, you think about these geopolitical tensions, some of these issues, I mean, they more than transcend just a four-year term of any president. But how would you expect this to resolve, if at all, when, of course, we get past the presidential election? Do you think that that will actually matter? Well, I think, look, I think stability is an important thing. So if you know what's going to happen, this allows you to plan in the future. So that creates some stability for large and small manufacturers. So you can see that working. If you look at the consumers themselves, you know, people have talked a lot about the Atlantic Monthly and Wall Street Journal have people, articles like, why are the consumers depending on feeling as opposed to the economy itself? And a lot of it is food. You know, I, I heard you talking about inflation, about food. You know, one of the things people don't realize is that there are a lot of people in America still changing supermarkets because of coupons. Mm. You know, Sunday in the in the Kenosha News, you had uh, beefsteak tomatoes, special coupon, 99 cents, 99 cents a pound, you know, things like strawberries and, and, and other things. And what they're seeing is milk prices, yeah, they've gone down slightly, but they're still above pre-pandemic levels and they haven't gone down. So people worry about that. And that's one of the most sensitive things you have. Yeah. In, terms of manuf in terms of manufacturers, both consumers, I think the message I'm giving is both, con, you know, the people of work and both small manufacturers, they're kind of cash rich with a good economy. Garages, we call on about a million technicians. Garages are booming. I talked to, just yesterday, I talked to people in uh, in Atlanta and, and California and, uh, and, uh, and down in Iowa, over in Iowa. These are friends of mine or franchisees that go in the garage every day. The mm. garages are strong, but the people are cash rich but their confidence poor. You're seeing some of that in Asia. Yeah. I just got back from Hong Kong. And, and so that's what's driving the China economy. China is cash poor because the economy is not going well. But they're also in, in my, I've been going, I lived in Asia, in Asia for 11 years. China has never been, I think, at the grassroots less confident. Right. You juxtapose that with India. I've never seen a more confident. The, the current leader in India, Modi, you know, I think they think they found their guy who can finally ring commonality out of that patchwork that is what we call India. And they seem to be going pretty well and they're very confident about their economy. You look at Japan, they're having exchange rate problems. But other places like Indonesia and Singapore and Malaysia seem to be pretty good.